Okay, wait, the light is so good. So what's up guys, it's Gigi Robinson. I'm gonna tell you about what I think about the creator economy and the future of work when it comes to hiring influencers internally, as well as brands working with influencers when it comes down to pay transparency. There are a lot of different things that I think are said from industry to industry, from influencer marketing sides of things, to paid media spends, to entertainment, and really understanding the role of an influencer at your company. I think the key things that you have to really start to think about are influencers are people, specifically people who usually have LLCs who rely on these gigs to make their full-time job, aka pay them what they're worth and then some because a third of whatever you're taking goes directly into taxes. So I guess the big question is after a third of the income is taken away is the rate that is left over two thirds of the budget that you are spending on this person and their content going to actually be sustainable for them and most times the answer is no because brands say oh we're just hiring an influencer to promote these sunglasses right that's a hundred dollar deal or a five hundred dollar deal well you take a third of that there's basically only three hundred dollars left you can't get more than like a meal or some groceries for $300. So I think unless people are having a lot of deals coming through all the time, you will experience burnout A as a creator and B, you won't create that retention that I think everybody talks about, about long-term partnerships and investing in creators. So that is super important. That's my take on it. And I also want to talk about budget. This is a very subjective topic and I'm really happy to talk about my perspective on it. I see it as a unique opportunity for brands to partner with individuals as artists, right? If you are collaborating with somebody, again, let's say on a new glasses collaboration, right? And it's some big new collection, you're going to be paying them not only a commission, but you're probably going to be paying them for their time and energy and effort to actually create the new collection, right? So why is it any different if you have an influencer? I think that a lot of the time brands will tend to say, oh, well, we're investing in a long-term partnership and basically they end up giving you a lump sum up front, but then you end up doing more work or they end up saying, we're going to do a long-term partnership. And by that, we want you to actually be an affiliate for us. And they'll use the term brand ambassador instead of the term affiliate marketing. And this one really irks me because being a brand ambassador is something I've done for a while. It's where you have six month to one year long partnership with a brand and you are their bread and butter, right? Um, for me, you know, that was Timberland at one time because I'm in New York City and working with a company that I grew up wearing and that is so culturally iconic here in New York was amazing. And I was a college demographic. They were looking to get in touch with more college students. So it was perfect, right? That was a six month thing and that happened in college and that was not affiliate marketing it was not about how many sales I generated and I got paid I was getting paid simply to create the content and there's a big misconception now in the industry where people think that you can send them product they'll make a couple of things and only if they drive sales you will get paid influencers listening f that do not partner with brands that do that Brands, my question to you is how can you see this valuable? The next thing on that note is calculating your rate. Again, this is from my personal experience. I will have brands say, oh, well, you know, that's too high. That's okay. I'm not interested in working with you unless you can pay my rate. And that's because I am exclusive to a certain amount of brands that I work with. I've only done four different brands this year and I've already doubled my revenue from last year. And I think that that's really special. When you are calculating your rate, think of a couple of things. Think of your unique competitive advantage, right? What do you have that nobody else in the industry has? Even if maybe you've seen, maybe you have you think that it's unique and maybe it does exist, that's still something you can leverage, right? I think that that's really important, number one. Number two, how long does it take you to produce the content? Let's let's take it hourly, right? How long did it take you to acquire 10 years of photography experience so that you could shoot self-portraits and you could also shoot videography on your own? Oh, what's that? Yeah, it took 10 effing years. So you're being paid for your experience in that. And Brad's like, oh, well, we just want iPhone footage. I don't care. That doesn't discredit my experience and maybe that is a little bit polarizing but I personally 
think that it's extremely valuable and I hold myself to a certain standard to produce content that is made with my camera with professional gear and that's just really important to me and the way that i direct my personal content but everybody has their own unique flair separate to that like i said hourly rate right let's take it down from the minute that you got the email how long does it take you to negotiate usually that is one to five hours of negotiation time total you get the contract you read the terms they give you a little bit more information you want to negotiate a little they say okay let me get back to the brand the brand gets back to them they say okay we can offer you this you're like okay that's great let's do it okay let's send you the docusign contract okay now that i have the docusign contract let's get the countersign one once the countersign one is done we'll send you the brief after the brief we'll send you the video um or we'll do a video call to go through the brief and to go over your content that you're going to tell us like how you're directing and then you're submitting a script and you're submitting an outline of your content and you're writing your captions. I mean, literally, and that's not even shooting. We're not even at the shooting part yet. Then you have to shoot it. Then you have to edit it. Then you send it out. Then it gets usually one to three rounds of feedback back and forth, which can take anywhere from a day to a month. Um, and then you post it and then you have to send the insights. And then 30 days after that, you get paid. Holy effing shit. That took me two minutes to describe. That is why I charge what I charge. Because coming down to an hourly rate, it usually nets out to over 30 hours of work. You know, um, most people have a 40 hour work week. That's how much time it usually takes to produce from start to finish an ad. And if it was during a week, if there was a way to say, you know what, this week I'm shooting this only and I'm developing this and we're executing, fantastic. I wish and I hope that at some point it will get to that point for me. But right now it's very one off and it's very sporadic. But a lot of times I'm working with different agencies. And that's another thing about the influencer industry. I also think that if you are in the industry and you decide that you want to hire an influencer in-house to make content, again, think about how much you're paying them. Although they are probably getting other benefits like salary, vacation time that's paid, things like that. And, and it's consistency for a lot of people. At the end of the day, I personally think that you're going to be taken advantage of as a creator. And I think brands are taking advantages of creators in these positions because yes, it goes on your resume, but you're just not getting the same kind of compensation that freelancers are getting. But on the flip side of things, the compensation freelancers are getting is not always what it seems. It's usually two thirds of that. Just keep that in mind. I thought I would impart this wisdom on everybody. It's just, it needs to be addressed and I really wish that a lot of the brands that do advocate for creators really start to up level the fees that they're paying creators because also at the end of the day social media marketing and when influencers are creating ads is not just posting on a social platform it's not just posting for a photo it is literally the paid media spend and by that i mean it is a part of the budget usually a global budget that a brand is going to be spending and allocating funds to promote to a global audience so you're creating content at a fraction of what it might cost to actually produce a television commercial or a billboard ad and that is totally understandable however usually the companies end up boosting it or usually creators end up making content and in their contract they accidentally sign away the rights to their content so that um usage wise the company can do whatever the f they want with it they can put it in emails they can put it on their website they can put it in a tv ad and you won't get a single dollar for that so that is another thing to look out for but anyway this could go on and on forever so companies if you're watching this and you want me to come into your company and educate your influencer marketing team paid media spend and social media marketing teams please hit me up go to my website and you can you know fill out some forums and let's do something cool influencers if you have questions i am going to be launching workshops later this summer so definitely keep an eye out on that on how to monetize and stick up for yourself and advocate for what you believe in so anyway i hope you really enjoyed this bye guys Mwah.